Hi there. Thank you so much for everyone who watched and commented on my Costco inspired freezer meals. It was a super fun idea and I'm glad that you all loved it. And I have gotten some requests to do sort of another reheat video to go over how I reheated these meals, served them, and if I would make them again. Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. My name's Nicole. So if you missed my Costco freezer meal video, go ahead and go back and watch that to see how I prepared the meals. So today is just gonna be a, a review and reheat of those meals. We ate all of these meals on different days, days that I was super busy and didn't have time to cook at home or was just too tired to. So let's go ahead and kick it off with our French toast sticks. Okay, so this morning I'm gonna be heating up the French toast sticks for breakfast. Here's well, the rest of them, what they look like frozen in this. They did stick together just a bit, but nothing too crazy. So what we do is we thaw ours overnight. So this is what we have from the night before. That way they cook a little bit quicker. I'm going to wrap these in a damp paper towel just to help add some moisture back in. So we'll see how that goes for breakfast. I'm gonna serve it with a couple of eggs and then I just have some odds and ends of some breakfast meats that I'm gonna throw in as well. Okay, so I just have a damp paper towel here. I'm gonna add all my sticks and just sort of slightly wrap them and add them to the microwave. I have my breakfast meats cooking on this side. There's just some turkey bacon and some sausage. I'm gonna attempt to also cook my eggs in the same pan to make this as easy as possible. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> the things I'll do to only have to wash one pan. <laughs> Not bad. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to these. I'm also gonna make these cheesy eggs, so I'll drop some cheese in there, a little bit of green onion. Putting our wrapped French toast sticks in the oven, and I'm just gonna try for 45 seconds. All right, I'm gonna add my eggs, breakfast sausage added, and then I'm just gonna unwrap my French toast. You can see here, there's a good amount of moisture added back. So I'm gonna add those to my plate. I keep a mixture of cinnamon sugar in my pantry. Dust that with a little sprinkle. And I added a side of banana and we're done. So the French toast sticks, as you saw, super easy to reheat. They tasted really good. My husband loved them and so did my toddler. As for making them again, like I said in the preparation video, it was a lot more work, but I did get a tip in the comments that might be just easier to cut them after the fact, like when they're made and they can toast up on all sides. So I might try that, but as far as flavor, how easy it was to reheat and serve. Awesome. Okay, so today is gonna be a quick corn dog lunch. My husband already took out a couple of corn dogs from the freezer last night, so they've just been thawing overnight in the fridge. And I'm just gonna serve it with some easy tater tots, some vegetables. So we're gonna go ahead and pop these in the microwave just to really get the inside of them, the hot dog on the inside hot and then we're gonna add it to the air fryer to crisp it up. So let's set them in. So we're gonna do maybe 40 seconds or so. While those are in the microwave, I'm gonna start off my tater tots just to get those going for a couple minutes while we wait. While my tots are going, I'm just going to really quickly cut up a few veggie sticks to add to the lunch as well. And I've already washed these up and I just went ahead and peeled the carrots. These last few minutes on the air fryer, I'm gonna go ahead and add the corn dogs and let those crisp up while the tots finish. So my tater tots, I'm gonna go ahead and remove because they're nice and crispy. Leave my corn dogs in there for another minute or so. I'm just going to sprinkle these with a little bit of salt and a little bit of the chopped 
parsley. Toss those a little bit. I'm gonna add my corn dogs. They're nice and crispy. And I'm just gonna give them a little drizzle. And there you go, super easy reheated corn dog lunch with some easy added tots and veggies on the side. These corn dogs, although it was sort of a two-step process to reheat, first microwave to get that corn dog nice and hot internally, and then air fryer to crisp it up, well worth the two steps. Each of them are super quick and it gets that corn dog so crispy in the air fryer afterwards. 100% recommend you do that. You can definitely smell it in there and as you're eating it, I might even just add a skosh more honey next time to the batter, just because we love that taste. Definitely recommend those corn dogs, make those. Okay, so tonight we're gonna make our poblano, creamy poblano enchiladas. This was taken out of the freezer last night and it's just been thawing, the whole tray's been thawing in the fridge overnight and all day today. So I took off the top and this is what it looks like. No freezer burner or anything, looks great. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover this with some foil. Last week, my husband tried reheating it with this cover on, the one that it came with, and he told me that it actually burnt holes in here. So we're not gonna make that mistake. So I just covered it with some foil. I'm gonna put it in the air fryer. And the default bake temp on my air fryer is 325. So we're gonna let that go for about 10 to 15 minutes. While our enchiladas are working in the air fryer, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on a side of cilantro lime rice. So I just have some olive oil. I'm gonna add my onions. I just have some chopped onions here. And we're gonna let that saute until they get more translucent. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of chopped up garlic in there and let that saute up just a bit. That smells delicious. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add just some day old white rice, plain white rice in here because it's gonna really absorb that garlic and onion flavor. Just mix that around a bit. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of chicken bouillon for some added flavor in here. I just eyeball that. Now I'm gonna hit it with a lot of pepper. I'm gonna squirt a good amount of lime juice in here. And then I'm gonna add a big handful of chopped up cilantro. We like ours pretty herby, so I do add a good healthy amount of cilantro in there. And this rice is done. So these are the enchiladas at the air fryer. I had them in there for 10 minutes on 325. And then I hiked up the temp to about 400 just to brown the cheese a little bit for, the, for an additional two minutes about. And the cheese started bubbling so it looks great. Let's go ahead and get these out. There's a little bit of the cheese stuck to the pan and a little bit of tortilla. So nothing major though, still good. All right, so this is what dinner's looking like. The two creamy poblano enchiladas here, very hot. My cilantro rice, and then I just added a simple side salad for some veggies and then topped it with a little fresh cilantro. For these poblano enchiladas, the reheat on them was quite easy. As far as taste and flavor, I do like using the flour tortilla, the creamy poblano sauce. We found it to be a little too on the creamy side, if that makes sense. I don't know if that's because I used Greek yogurt in place of sour cream. I don't think that that's the reason. We would have preferred more of the actual poblano taste. It was quite mild in there. If I were to make these again, I would add even more flavor, more heat, because we like things on the spicier side. 
So either some diced up jalapenos in there or some type of heat. And then I would also bump up the chicken flavor with just a little bit of chicken bouillon seasoning on that chicken itself. So yes, I would make the enchiladas again, but with some minor tweaks. All right, so for breakfast this morning, we took out one of these sausage, egg, and white cheddar brioche sandwiches. So it's been in the fridge overnight and this morning. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. There's no freezer burning or anything, or anything. It looks good. So first step, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it in the microwave just to get the inside warmed up. And I'm gonna serve this with, this one's gonna be for my husband. I'm gonna serve it with a hash brown patty today. And I'm gonna get that in the air fryer. And I wanna get this hash brown cooking up because that's gonna take a few minutes while we get our sandwich in the microwave. And this is gonna be really simple. It's really not gonna need too long to heat up in the middle. So I'm really just gonna do maybe 40 seconds. And while I have those working, I'm just washing up some grapes here that I have, cause I do wanna serve it with a side of fruit. So I'm gonna let these dry off for a bit. My sandwich is out of the microwave and you can see that the cheese is just slightly starting to melt. So I know it's warm. So I'm going to, my hash brown has been in the air fryer for about five minutes at 400. So I'm just going to drop in my sandwich right next to it for the remaining two minutes. I got my sandwich at the air fryer. It is very hot. It's nice and toasted up. Really only took two minutes. You can see the cheese. It's nice and gooey. It's very hot on the inside, which is exactly what we want the egg and sausage heated through. And I just served this with my hash brown patty and some fruit. These breakfast sandwiches, let me tell you, not only are they the easiest thing to make as breakfast sandwiches usually are, but my husband loved these. These were one of the first things to go in the freezer. He went through these sandwiches. I think using the brioche bread just really adds to it. The reheat's easy. 100% recommend you make those breakfast sandwiches. <laughs> now, so for today, I'm just gonna do a really quick, simple bagel bites lunch. And unfortunately, these are the only two I have left of the entire bag that I made. My husband has been eating through these like crazy. So I actually went ahead and made a big batch of these. It's the same exact way that I did in the video, just with bagels that are a little bigger. These are bagel thins, technically. These are my favorite things to reheat because they are so quick and easy. Um, these that you see here are already thawed and I knew my husband wanted to eat these for lunch. So he went ahead and thawed them. They've been in the fridge all day today. And you can see they came out perfectly fine. No freezer burn or anything. So because these are so small and really easy to heat through, we are gonna be popping these straight in the air fryer and they heat up within minutes. So I'm gonna pop these in at 400 for just a few minutes. And you'll see when the cheese starts melting and getting a little bubbly, they're done. I just pop these out of the air fryer. They're in at 400 for about three to four minutes. And you can see the cheese is starting to bubble and brown a little bit, so they are perfect. All I'm gonna do is just top it off with a little bit of grated parm and some chopped up fresh parsley because I have it. And that's done. This Bagel Bites Lunch could not be easier. Serve it with a side of the fresh veggie sticks. As you saw, the Bagel Bites so easy to reheat because they're so small, they heat up so quick. My husband and toddler could not get enough of these Bagel Bites. As I'm recording this right now, I've already made a whole nother batch because they went so quickly. <laughs> you gotta make them. All right, so for dinner tonight, we're gonna heat up one of the lasagnas we made. So this has been thawing overnight and all day today in the refrigerator. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the top to show you what it looks like. Everything, it's not at all frozen anymore. It's super thawed. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook it. You could cook it from frozen, but it would just take way longer. So this is why we like to thaw first. We'll do the first bake with the foil on, and then we'll take the foil off later to get the cheese nice and browned. So let's get that started. While my lasagna is on its first kind of bake, I just pulled out a couple things from my fridge that I'm gonna use to make a really quick, easy salad to go on the side of it. And then I found in my pantry, just this is like random one piece of bread roll. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is cut this open and use it to make a really simple piece of garlic toast to also throw in with the lasagna when it's browning its own cheese. I split the bread open, super simple. I'm just gonna smear on some softened butter. I'm just gonna sprinkle on some Italian seasoning. And just some garlic powder. And my husband asked me to make this garlic cheese bread instead of just garlic bread. So I have some extra mozzarella cheese in my fridge that I'm just gonna sprinkle on. The lasagna has been baking in the air fryer for about 15 minutes at 325, which in a regular oven would probably be 350. So I'm just gonna remove the foil. This is what it's looking like. I can tell the noodles are getting cooked through. They're cooked through because they're nice and soft. So what I'm gonna do is change it from bake to air fry so that it starts cooking at 400. And then my air fryer has this separate rack that you can add to add a second layer of food. So I'm gonna add in our little cheesy bread and pop this in for a couple minutes till that cheese on both the lasagna and the bread gets nice and bubbly. So after five minutes, I just pulled it out because you can see the cheese is nice and melty and it's even a little brown. So I'm just gonna let it sit here for a few minutes to kind of cool a little bit before we slice right into this. I went ahead and cut it out of the pan, released super well. Smells really good too. So no sticking or anything, turned out great. And I just made a simple, easy, quick salad. And then I have my garlic cheese toast on the side. The noodles are cooked, they're very tender. It's piping hot on the inside. Review for this lasagna, it turned out so good. I love the idea of doing sort of the double meat flavor and the one layer ricotta, just because we love the meat more than ricotta. <laughs> The flavor on it was outstanding. 100% recommend this lasagna. Even to my surprise, my toddler got down on his piece of lasagna. He ate way more than we even thought he would. He just kept eating and eating it. Definitely this lasagna recipe is a win. All right, so this morning, I'm just gonna heat up this breakfast bowl. And so my husband took this out last night, so it's been thawing in the fridge overnight. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. This is up close, the bowl we set up. And I know, not much to look at, right? But I promise you that'll change once this is reheated. So I'm actually gonna throw this straight into the air fryer. That's what's great about using these containers rather than plastic ones uh, because I could just pop it straight in there. So I'm going to do that and we're going to go for about five or six minutes. We'll see how long it takes. But what we're looking for is for everything to be heated through. It's not frozen anymore. It's just cold. So we're just looking for it to be heated through and that bacon on top to be really crispy and that cheese melty. So this is gonna be the easiest reheat. Let's pop it in. Just pop this out of the air fryer. You can see that cheese started to melt. This bacon is nice and crispy. And all I'm gonna do literally is just top it with some fresh parsley because I have it. <laughs> and then serve it with a side of salsa because this one's for my husband and he likes salsa with his bowls and a little bit of fruit. That is it. This is the easiest reheat. These breakfast bowls, not only were they super easy to make because you're just throwing in a bunch of single ingredients to make this bowl, 
I wish I would have made more of them. The reheat on it, I was hesitant at first, but it came out so well. The potatoes were crispy, the cheese was melty, the eggs were still soft in texture. Yes, for sure, make these breakfast bowls again. That Jimmy Dean is on to something. <laughs> That is Definitely. it for the reheat and review of all of our Costco inspired freezer meals. Please let me know if this was helpful for you at all in the comments. And I am planning on doing a part two or a whole nother batch because they have so many options over there. So I'm gonna make a whole batch of new Costco inspired freezer meals. So please subscribe if you're not already so that you'll be notified once that one comes out. If you wanna hang out with me some more in the kitchen, go ahead and watch a couple of these videos up here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.